New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowler Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit ficosbowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Fico's Bolodrome in Franklin, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins Winter Tournament 2014. In our second Elite Eight show, Mike the Dart Legender rolls against seasoned veteran Dave Chesterco. Then game two, Jason Double Guns Doucette takes on Huff and Puff Bill Clough. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. Welcome to New England Candle Pins. We're at Fico's Bowler Drove in Franklin, Massachusetts, and we're here with our two of our Elite Eight bowlers for our first match of today's show. We'll pit Mike Legendra against Dave Chesterco. Mike advanced by beating Dan the Gothman Gothier in an exciting match that we got to see a little bit ago. Mike, uh, you've bowled against Dave before. Yeah. yeah. I know he's a good bowler. It's just been pinning well. That's it. Absolutely. Um, I know you've been bowling fairly well. You had a great match against Dan when you bowled against him. But I expect Dan, I expect uh, Dave to bowl well now too, so, so it should be a good match. Yep, we're looking forward to it. Two of our uh, bowlers that have been with us many, many times on New England Candle Pins. Dave, uh, you advanced by beating Wayne Palumbo in that nail biter of an exciting uh, match. The one we are not going to talk about what the scores were, but it was a one point, one pin match. Yes, yes indeed. And are you still feeling the best you've ever felt? Yeah, yeah. At this time, I made one important change. Yeah. I moved 26 cents from my left pocket to my right pocket. It's going to make a difference. In that, that. Absolutely. 26 cents. You know what? I'm going to try that see if my back feels better. Nope. But I don't have 26 cents. I might need to borrow that. Okay. We're going to be back with this match. But first of all, folks, you at home are going to get to see those brackets again. Here they go. Welcome back, and we're ready for today's first match. Pitting Mike Legendra against Dave Chestercove. Mike's gonna be up first on lane 15. Good luck, guys. And we're joined by my usual partner. No, Dave's not here again. <laughs> so Richie Myrick's here, and we're thrilled to be joined by Dan Goff here. Dan, thanks for joining us. Hey, glad I could thrill you guys. You thrilled me already, Dan, but I don't know. Jay's hard to please. No, no, I'm <laughs> pleased. I'm very pleased. There's someone in between Richie and I, so that's good. <laughs> Ooh. So naturally, this is the game that Mike won't get any breaks since, uh, since it's 133 <laughs> in my match. He'll probably go up there and you know get the head pin 10 times and get a 99 this one. That'll be my prediction. This is Mike's home house, right? Mike Legender, or at least uh, he certainly bowls here a lot. That's right, yeah, that's, it's listed as his home house. Uh, yeah, he bowls real well here, he really does. The ball's sort of made for this place. A lot of rotation on it, a lot of good action. And he's comfortable here, that's a big part of it too. It's huge. Puts the load on the way by to carry the four pin. That's a spare for Legendra. I'd argue the same a little bit, Dan, for Dave. I mean, he's pulled. I joked the first time that we bowled together on this, uh, on this show that he pulled at least 10,000 games here. And I, I <laughs> yeah. was only being slightly hyperbolic on that. Yeah, I mean, he lives, what, in Franklin? So, it's pretty close. Just that comfort factor. 
how do you do that? I want to know how you turn a spread eagle into a three pinner with wood. I need to put that in my repertoire. <laughs> He's got the wood, but he's got to, he's got to go low on it here. Right, yeah, six ten. He does. I think even DC knows he's got a mark for this one. You know, unlike his first match, he was pulling someone who was a little nervous, hasn't been on before. Uh, he knows Mike's not nervous, and uh, Mike's probably going to put a 120 or 130 up there, so DC's going to want to make sure he, every mark's going to matter. Uh, normally, I would 100% agree with you, but uh, Wayne actually bowled against me in the fall series. Yep. And probably should have smoked me. <laughs> like a 130 something. I don't remember what the actual score was, but I got lucky enough to get by at that time. And he didn't look a bit nervous against me, but I'll tell you what, it wasn't about a tale of two matches because today against Dave, or at least I should say, during this winter series against Dave, he didn't look like he was pressing. Two marks from Chester Cove right out of the gate, picks the nine pin. It's interesting, Dan, the show you were on with uh, Wade and Dave and Mike was the first show we've had in this winter series where all four bowlers had been on the show before. Yeah. We've had many, many first-timers in this winter series. And three out of four of us have been on the same team before. Uh, Mike, Dave, and myself were right, on the same team that. last year. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Friday night team. But it... it um, you know, as, as you said earlier, Richie, in one of our other shows, it just encourages people to come out and try out for the show because you just, you never know. We've seen the newcomers have a lot of success, and I mean, I right. just, uh, we can only hope that that breeds more newcomers. Mike hit a seven fill on his spare in the second, and has 33 through three. Uncharacteristically off. No, I hear you guys are going to help us out this year and film our kids' show. Yeah, we've talked about that. That's going to be awesome. Junior pros, because they're, they can be really good, too, sometimes. Yeah, Pete, Pete and I uh, got together a few weeks ago and started talking about that. I know he had had some contact with you or whatever, so it's something we're looking forward to. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that, Dan? Well, this will be the first year I'm trying to take a back seat on it, so Rob is, is really the guy in charge. Yeah. Um, a bunch of kids, they compete, they do semifinals just like the adults do, they do three swings and we take the highest uh, highest two boys and highest two girls in each of three different age brackets and we're going to bring them all back for one day of taping and be a long day obviously, they'll right. have a big ladder to run but um, there's some fantastic kids. Every year there's a certain age group that really dominates. For the last couple of years it's been the kids who are now about 13 or 14 and it started when they were 10. And, uh, that seems to be where a lot of talent is. So I would say keep your eyes open for that age group when they bowl, the 12 to 14 year olds. Some really good kids and the lights aren't going to bother them at all. Chester Cove starts off with the six in the third frame. And then for a while you did on uh, Nesson, right? Yeah, we did Nesson the last two years. Yeah. Um, we're just looking for an alternative. The production is virtually the same for what you guys do. Oh, great, great job by Dave. by Dave. Great job from Dave. And the distribution can potentially reach the same audience. I know you guys yep. will be able to put in a library that all the towns, not not just Franklin area, can get to. Right, right. You know, a lot of it is just being able to watch it online too, whether it's yep. YouTube or a website, burn DVDs. And... It's great for the kids. That's a lot awesome. of them watch it in school, I hear. They, they take the DVDs <laughs> and they, they play it in school. Well, hopefully not during their actual classes. I, I think it may be. Maybe call it gym class. So well, I would hope it would be standard curriculum. That's just <laughs> it's the only way, you know, you have to go for the kids to make the sport grow. Absolutely. Oh, that's great that we'll be going to be able to come together and put this together, you know. Oh, great job by Dave. Oh, Chester Cove is really heating up now. That's four in a row to start. Yeah. Four spares as well. So he's got 60 in a ball, hanging it through four. And that'll put the pressure squarely on Legendre here. I'm sure that's the start DC envisioned in his last match. Mark, mark, mark. Yeah, it just didn't quite work out. No, sometimes way. it doesn't. It's a funny game. 
You know what? If this game always had high scores, honestly, I don't think the people who bowl in it would like it as much. And people right. who bowl candle pin instead of ten pin or duck pin, they like the extra challenge. You got to think that the bad is the good. Right. Right. See with the trademark meditation back there, you want to head down. Like with the Rarely seven is count, He's counting the spots on the floor. Yeah. Rarely watches what his opponents do. And there are many. You know what? We've never gotten a complete total uh, from Dave on, on the number of right. spots Lots. on the floor. May need a couple more episodes. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like asking the Beatles how many holes it really took to fill the <laughs> outer hole. It's just not, we don't know. match against you, Dan. This is kind of where he started really coming together and putting the marks you know, right around this. Yeah, but keep in mind, I predicted since he's not bowling me, we may be looking at a 99 game. Right, well. right. I bring out the best. Well, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> I'd say he's on pace, but at this point he does get a mark, so... You know, in all fairness, when, when your opponent starts getting ahead of you by 30 in a one spin match, sometimes it's hard to keep the same it's focus. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. It's easy to just take the last three or four boxes and just kind of go through the motions He's and just put up a 99 in. game yeah. and yeah. congratulate the guy and move on. Yeah, yeah. it's a much different, obviously, if it's yeah. a two or a three string match. You, just, you know, those last two boxes are still meaningful. It's an interesting format change for us, uh, Jay, like you were alluding to uh, in our opening. Uh, Two string format. For yeah, the finals, the finals are going to the finals are going to be two strings. Um, so it'll be a much different scenario at this point. But uh, with the one string match, we've got a thirty pin difference and right, just right. a few boxes to go. It's really difficult to come back. From. And I'm not saying it's ever all right for anybody to take a box or a ball oh, off. We get a pin out there. We get a pin out in the lane. You want me to get it? I don't, I don't care. care. I'm in I the middle. Know. Oh, we got a bunch of people. Who are we there. sending? We're sending Doucette out there. Double guns. All right, double guns. Yep. <laughs> Show them your tattoos. Maybe it'll give us a trademark. Oh, double look at gun it. it was rolling back anyway. Yeah. Oh, what a hot dog. He didn't even have to go down there. <laughs> hey, we were going to hey, let here's physics some more take camera care of that time. Pin. There you go. Way to go, Jay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> physics were taking per you know, perfectly good care of that pin. <laughs> Pulling it back. Boom. I said boom in case you didn't have microphones down there. <laughs> Sound effects. That was awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Think on this one. You did some of those for the old Batman show. I <laughs> oh, in front of it. Two. Excellent effort. At this point, with a 30 pin lead, four boxes to go. Pretty much forces Mike to mark four times. Yeah, realistically. You know, and I think this is what uh, Dave was talking about when he said he's felt the best he's ever felt. Yeah, yep. he's won a couple of 411s two of the last three weeks. Yeah. Uh, you start putting 400s right. on a 50% right. basis, you're definitely feeling good about yourself. He, he, he just looks so much more comfortable out there than he did in his last uh, shot, my Great shot. shot. Right. One, one in a row. You can't get the four without starting with one. That's right. Three's a lot easier than four. Yeah, and uh, you know, it can be fewer, obviously, if you throw a strike in there somewhere. So you can get a double. And... A strike here would be sweet. I mean, he really put himself back in the match with that. Be realistic. It's a big pin. Yeah, you got that extra Huge. ten pin to fall. Huge. It's gonna leave the three. Excuse me, the two and the seven. Does have a little touch of the two. Should be okay anywhere on the pin. Good nice. shot. Nice. He did what he had to do. Those two. Now he's gonna hope that Dave goes up there. And doesn't do too much. Yeah. DC conversely will just be looking to put one mark in there. Right? You get one out of two, and numbers game now. One string match, you can run them out of boxes at this point. 
do it. Oh! Right. oh. I thought he was going to move it. Yeah, it might be 10. It wow. is. Oh. Hey, you went from having a miserable split <laughs> to a strike. <laughs> was the 5 7, then it was the 7, and then it was the strike. Thought his 5 pin was going to take a walk on him that time. About 5 or 6 inches and stay out. Some of the one in your match. Yeah, I did. I'm used to that at Academy, though. Some days at Academy, you'll see 10 of those a night. It's kind of goofy. Academy lane sets in Haverhill. Or Bradford, but right next to Haverhill, right on the line. But well, yes, but for the sake yeah. of the, for the sake of making it's kind of a feel good, say yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. 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 I usually yeah. say hey, bro. Yeah. You get Pilgrim right there in here. So you get a couple of bowling alleys right near each other. Nice house. In here, they're both beautiful establishments. Pico's is nice, too. That's where we host this show, right? Yep, Pico. Oh, that's that's good. It's quality place. Yeah. I like it a lot. I like Pico's, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be the shortest drive. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me. Drive 90 minutes to all my leagues, and I could be driving 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird situation. Oh, now with just the six fill, six box for Dave, that's going to open up the door a little bit. Still needs a two more. Yep. Big fills too. Going to have to earn it. The second piece of wood is going to turn a little bit and get involved. We'll see if it helps or hurts. It's kind of hard to imagine it would hurt, given, <laughs> given that. Uh, you're gonna out without the wood. You're gonna make a nice light shot. pins that they use, they show up great on TV, but it's a little easier to punch. It's not one of my favorites, that's for sure. Especially if it's on the right side. I particularly don't like it. I always leave the corner pin every time. Yeah, I'm usually good for two out of it. Two or three. But that's, a, but that's if I hit the front one. <laughs> yeah, what a finish. 139, fine game by DC. So... Our first match in this show has Dave Chesterkold beating Mike Legendra 139 to 106. And we'll be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment.
Welcome back to New England Candlepins, and we're with our bowlers from our first match of today's Elite Eight show. Uh, Mike Legendre and Dave Chestercove. Uh, Dave ended up being victorious in that match. Uh, Mike, you know, you just seemed a little bit off from your previous match. You, you bowled well. You, you picked up a couple of marks in the later frames. I think it was the seventh and the eighth, and uh, then just again a little off the head pin. Over, trying to over, overthrow a little bit, you know, so you try to do it because you, you know you down pins. Right. And you, you're trying to force it in there, and you can't do that. So, and, so. and Dave came out on fire. Right. Wait, four, first four frames, he right. he had spares, and you had to I mean, you had to mark. Right. Well, the first the first one I, should, I, I thought I had. Right. Know, and it didn't go. So and then I got a knife in, drop it, drop But there's nothing you do after that. So Hey, one thing I wanted to ask you because you are a sponsor yep. of uh, New England Candle Pins while we're fortunate enough to have you here, the yep. USCBA. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, we you know sponsor like the kids program and a lot of stuff and we do all the you know the TV show here and a lot of stuff. Right. You know, I know we donate two hundred bucks to the show and all that to, to keep it running and a lot of stuff. And you know, Dave is with me on that stuff. Right. So. You know, we just try to do as much as we can for the kids and the, and the adult stuff, but we're trying to do more for the kids because we need kids to bowl or it's going to die. Absolutely. Without the kids, then we don't have right. the adults who turn pro and, right. and take part right. in great shows like this and everything. What's at the website that people can check out, see where different events are, they can go and watch or participate? Right. It's, um, what is it, Dave, again? Uh, uh, www.uscandlepin.com. Candlepin, right? Yep. Candlepin.com. Okay, um, and can they also find out where the kid events and, and things are or on that website as well? Yep, that will be, uh, be posted uh, extremely soon. So. Okay, okay. And, and um, so that's great. That's great information. Um, and, and the USCBA has done a tremendous amount to allow uh, Franklin Cable and New England Candlepins to do this show ever since we started. Without you guys and your association, this show wouldn't be on the air. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, so I'm going to give you this $50, but not for that. This is uh, for, for uh, making it to the Elite A for your bowling this season. Um, but more importantly, thank you so much for your support of the Candlepin Bowling community and, and, uh, and this show specifically. Um, because it, it, it's a great show. We have a lot of fun doing it. I've learned a lot. It allows Dave and Richie Myrick uh, their opportunity to make a fun of someone like me. Um, and they really enjoy doing that, especially Richie. Um, but it's a great thing. So thank you so much for doing that. So, um, Dave, great job. A, a nice victory. Now, as I said to Richie and Dan Gauthier, now I know what you mean when you say you're feeling as good as you've ever felt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, less the. Uh the last uh, taping was just uh, maybe because I knew Wayne so well. We were right. trying, to, trying to force the ball down there, kill right. each other. Right? Right. You know, it just didn't work. But, uh, you know, I said I settled down and I felt great. You know, the whole match. Yeah, you did. You came out with the uh, first four frames. You had uh, the spares right there, and both of you, as I said to Mike, you both bowled very well. You both very smooth, even keeled bowlers, and you, you know the the pins were going your way. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I was in the pocket uh, almost the whole almost the whole game. I think. I was able to make my shots. I know Mike had a few that didn't go. And, right. Uh, you know, thankfully, uh, well, thankfully it turned out for me the way it turned out. I'm sure Mike said, you know, stupid Dave. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, we're one and one, so it's all yeah. There you go. Well, as winner, you win $100, so congratulations on that. You'll advance to our semifinal show, our final four show, which will be coming up a little bit down the road. Thank you very much. What is community without community support? Without community access? Without communication that creates a common bond? You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community.
We're back with our bowlers for our second match in today's show. Our second Elite Eight match of the show. Uh, we're with Jason Doucette and Phil Clough. Uh, first, Jason, uh, how you feeling? All right. You ready to go? Have right. you guys bowled against each other before? Yes, many times, many, many times. That's what I figured. And have you had any success against Phil? No, absolutely not. None. Excellent. Okay. Not a lot of people have. No. Okay, Phil. Uh, how you feeling? Are you ready to go? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Uh, Jason's a good young bowler. I think he's telling tales over there. But I'm going to have to be on my game in order to stay ahead of him. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if we'll get this done in 10 frames or we'll have to go 14 like uh, you did in your victory over Jeremy. Well, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Well, we'll be ready to go in just a moment, and we'll be back after this. And we're back for our second match. Jason Doucette is going to take on Phil Clough, and Phil's going to start off first on lane 15. Good luck, guys. Phil's got a haircut. I can't really say he looks like Dumbledore or Grizzly Adams anymore, right? Frankly, I think it's not the same. I mean, it's like Samson. You cut your hair, you lose your superpowers. <laughs> we, uh, we put a team in once in the summer with Phil Clough. We made him the captain. We called our team Dumbledore's Army. Not bad. Pretty good. I don't think he knew who Dumbledore was. Though, I, so. I would <laughs> wager to guess that he has no clue, but it's just a guess. Well, it hasn't, hasn't hurt his mojo after that throwing match with uh, Jeremy Seaholm to get here. Sometimes after a match like that, sometimes you come out in the next match and everything just clicks and then you put up your 130, 140. And, um, I'm sure you would have liked to have made that first mark. Get one here, you can still do that. <laughs> there he goes. Can't ask for much better of a leave. 7, 8, two pieces of wood in front of it. Looks like they'll carry it. The only question might be the seventh. I agree. I think it'll carry. We'll find out here. And it carries it. Oh. See, it just it thought about it staying wasn't a up, question, but, but it was it was answered. But Phil with that power ball powers it down. Now Jason Doucette. Deuce. Getting a good grip on that first step well, off the rubber. It's like a baseball pitcher. Did it start on the rubber? Yeah. <laughs> and move his way to the wooden approach. He does have one of the longer approaches in the game, that's for sure. Now, I see, if I was his opponent, I'd put a chair there and throw him <laughs> off. Nice shot by Jason, picking up a single right off the bat. The toughest time to make a single is when you're coming first into the first box. <laughs> no question. Anything. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Though if you make it, you feel great about the whole game right away. That's right. Just five on the fill there from Doucette. Leaves the one, two, five, nine, five, eight, nine. box there. Pretty close match through two. Four Phil would even it up. I'm sure Phil is looking for well over four. Ross is into the one-two pocket. It's interesting the difference the approaches between the two. Phil is a very short approach. It seems like it's and it's longer than it was. Phil had a shorter right. approach earlier in the summer, but he uh, lengthened it a little, get a little more speed on his ball. And uh, there he goes. Finds a way to make the same three pins that I think he had missed earlier. So you get the same leave often enough, you gotta make it. Bound to make it. Uh, that one, he didn't, he didn't turn his wrist over like he normally does there. He actually left it straight and it didn't come back as far as it usually does. Yeah, these two bowlers do have uh, almost uh, completely opposite approaches in the sense that yep. Phil's, Phil's a three-step approach. Jason's Ooh. a four. But even the way they let go of the ball is opposite. Norm normally, when Phil's on, 
his right wrist turns to the left. He gets a little bit of hook, and then Jason sends that backspin on it. And Jason also slides on his right foot, which hey, is I get they, they couldn't incredibly be more incredibly <laughs> unusual. You don't see that very often. I feel like I even tried that. I would blow out my ankle on the way by. <laughs> ankle I'm trying to get you around know, myself. I'm did. a little surprised that the bowlers who do that, that, that their arm swing doesn't hit their leg more or their ankle right. more often, right? Yeah. I think that even bowling the correct way, every couple of years or so, I'll have one ball that'll nick my ankle on the way by. And Now, what if you were... Uh, what if you were using the other ankle? You'd I think you would really smack that's it. That's what I mean. I, I, I can't <laughs> even imagine. I'd have nine bucks shattered right third. <laughs> it's now chasing the nine pins, but Phil was open in the fourth with his ten box, so. Oh, that got away. Got away, but could be a lot worse. He's got the cluster of five now in the middle, the one, two, three, four, five. And the 10 pin with a piece of wood that's involved in the back. Oof. That's what you get for being a whisker full. Produce set. 11 pin match through four completed frames. 11's always a big number. I'm sure you're the same way, right? You want to keep that lead at 11. <laughs> Much better than 9. Yep, 11 always forces a double when it comes down to it in any situation, so you're right. Nice oh, shot, beautiful oh, shot. Off. Yep. I was thinking that the head pin might come off the left wall and take the, what was it, the uh, eight? The, the eight there, back. yeah. But instead, it was one of the back pins that came from the right to the left to take the eight. Hey, however it goes, it's a tough leave sometimes. It is a good ball. Well, it's about the fourth time Phil has left that if you go back to his last match. I think he left that same leave three times in his last match. a good run at it. Sneaks just by the three pin to the right side. Yeah, it looked pretty good leaving his hand. I thought he might have a chance. Obviously, if you're going to try to kick it over to get both of those pins on the left, you have to hit a real light shot. <laughs> 23 pins for two boxes. Nothing to be ashamed of when you're already nursing an 11-point lead. And do sets back up. Take advantage of the four horsemen. See if he goes for two or three here. I say the two. Yeah. That's one of the tough things. Sometimes you try to take your medicine and you, they only give, give you one anyway for your reward. It's situational too, you know. Obviously if you're in the last box or last couple boxes, you, you know if you should be getting just the two or keep things in range sometimes, keep the lead over ten, things like that. Ball that time, fortunate to carry that 10 pin. See if the wood cooperates oh. and it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, not promising. I still hope, yeah, he's probably gonna have to go high on the wood to carry the 4 7 and see if he can get something out. Or you go in the middle nine. of it to carry the 9 pin and hope the ball comes off the wall and oh. avoid. That's what he did, and it didn't carry anything. Never mind the ball coming off the wall, the wood didn't even take the <laughs> 9. <laughs> Hate to admit that that's where I was thinking of playing. <laughs> that's what had the same result. I guess your shot was better, Rich. High, take the two and hope something spins back. Uh, we'll never know. Well, no, we do know. We're that where he played it. Definitely not there. Your spot, I guess. <laughs> Tough break there for Doucette. Yeah. Cluff of 
with another good ball in the 1-3 pocket, nice and light. He's got the 2-pin, the 7, and the 9. A piece of wood right behind the 2-pin. Should be fine if he hits the 2. Nope. Oh, wow. It's the second straight time we've seen that leave, not necessarily with the wood, where the bowler rolled at it and took the back pin out. Remember that happened yes. in the last match, too? Or two matches ago? That's where he wanted to be. I would have taken it. Yep. But at this point, when you get a 19-point lead, 10s are not a bad thing. Here's a good ball. Oh, that was no the question the best ball he's thrown. Easily. In the middle, it's going to help him here. Let's see how much. I think he had to be on either end, though. Yeah. A little light at the end of the tunnel now for Doucette, no, no doubt. So a seven box there for Phil. See what that does for Jason. If he's able to capitalize on it. the way the bowling gods work. You know, you throw your best ball of the match and you leave that god-awful leave, then your opponent gets up there, misses the head pin, and 12 seconds later, finds out he has a nine drop. <laughs> and takes advantage as well. Yeah. That's, the, that's this game, I'll tell you. Clutch mark. That was a much better ball. A little full, but we'll take the eight and double wood. Double wood, you just never know where it's going to go, right? Yep. Yeah, you could hit a cap and one. have nothing happen, or you could bury the red line and have nothing happen. Who knows? We'll see right here. Oh, oh yeah. we got it. Follow the bouncing ball. Yep. Now we got ourselves a match. Eight fill would even. He was able up. to cut into that lead. Yep. Obviously. For all intents and purposes, just about even. See how Phil responds here. He's got to put that other ball out of his mind, the one he had back in the eighth. Could have wrapped things up. Beautiful ball and left that garbage lead. Come back and make a shot like this. That'll put it out of your mind. Here's that situation again, Dan. Yep, but here, I always think an average fill for a good bowler is a seven. Jason needs an eight to tie it. So if you make the two, and then it's, it's like a seven and a 10. Yeah, I would have gone for the two, is what I'm trying to say in a long roundabout way. Uh, I tend to agree, but I mean, again, like you say, it's situational, how you feel, how, how you bowl, and how you, yeah. Well, if no other, if nothing else, you just do a ball on the head pin so he knows where to throw it. And I come back there, and there it is, another head pin. Maybe it, maybe it paid dividends in the next box. That was a good ball there, just the eight pin now to hit. And I was worried about that. Sometimes you see wood off to the side, even though the wood's absolutely no good in your mind, you know, your mind wants to throw it to that side a little bit. So Phil will end up with a 108. <laughs> so it's still gonna require at least a decent fill from Doucette, and if he doesn't get one here, he's gonna require another mark. Anything six or over, and he can win it with tens. Anything five or less, and like I said, he'd need another mark to, to pull out the victory. Whoa! With well, emphasis. That's, that's <laughs> gonna do it. And the question was whether or not that last pin would leave the deck. And it all starts with the back door nine, and then you go for, you make the shot and go from there. This game is gonna give you a break here and there though, and you have to take advantage of it. You may only get one break a string, but usually you get one. What a comeback. I don't know, Shu, I don't recall you getting one. I go one of the 10th, remember the only time oh, I missed yes. the headband? Oh yes, yeah, I missed that's it. right, yep. Yeah. Try something different, yeah. you said. But even then, that was still. Yeah. <laughs> usually you can expect to get one. A 
nice looking finish though. It's up a good game after struggling through six. Finish so with a 126. Yep, 126. Goes it, seventh spare, eighth spare, ninth strike, and a spare in the tenth. So we'll be back to talk to our bowlers after this. Welcome back to New England Candlepins. We're here with our bowlers. Uh, Phil, you you were came, went out to an early lead, and then all of a sudden, the seventh frame, uh, Jason just uh, went on fire. Well, in the seventh box, I missed an easy spare, and that's all Jason needed to get going. He did, and then once he got going, there was no stopping him. No, there wasn't. He's a good young bowler. He's got a long future ahead of him. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you did a great job uh, for advancing this far. You do win $50, and uh, thank you very much, and I'm sure we'll see you back here again. I'm sure you will, yes. Great. We look forward to it. Jason. Tremendous uh, finish there. Uh, two spares, a strike, then another spare in the tenth. Yeah, I mean, uh, started off very slow, which I don't like to do, but it happens. And then uh, I took advantage of uh, a break, and from there just kind of rolled on, which is good. Yeah, at one point I think you were down 30 pins or so, and then all of a sudden that seventh frame, as Phil said, he, he, he kind of missed the spare, and then you just capitalized on that. And for you, it was downhill. Exactly. That's all. Hey, just needed one good break, and I took advantage of it, and you know, won the match. Thank God. <laughs> well, great job. You advance on to our semifinal round. Our final four is a winner there. You do win a hundred dollars. Congratulations on Thank that. You You'll advance, like I said, to our final four show. Uh, that's going to wrap up this last Elite Eight show. Uh, congratulations to both our winners and the guys that came in second. Um, for our announcers, Dan Gothier. And uh, Richie Myrick with a K. I'm Jay Horrigan. Also, thanks to Matt Ferrara. And we will be back right down the road with our semifinal, Final Four show. Take care and have a great day. possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowl Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit ficosbowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.